I think every one of us has experienced some moments when we feel helpless in the face of evil. When we feel like the chosen people with their back to the sea and an unrushing army coming their way. We might not know how to deal with a tragic death of a friend or a family member. Or maybe we might be treated unfairly by some sort of government agency or corporation that is much too strong for us to be able to deal with, deal with directly. Or we might be the target of someone's hate or prejudice. Or it could even be a sinful habit that we just can't seem to break. All those things that are beyond our strength, beyond our capabilities. But we know that they are not beyond God's power. That God could overcome that evil just as he was able to overcome Pharaoh's chariots and charioteers. No challenge can stand against him. But we also know that he usually doesn't work that way unless we let him. That he doesn't act in our lives, in our hearts, in our reality without our permission. And so often we don't let him. We don't allow him to be working in us in that way. Because it calls us to surrender. And we like to have control. So often we can't let ourselves be Jesus' family to become like him, to become his brothers and sisters and mothers by doing the will of our Heavenly Father. And that's so tragic, really. Because in our attempts to be in control, in our attempts to focus on our own wills, we end up letting go of God's great grace for us. We want him to save us, but we want him to do it on our terms. We have a time frame for him. We have a plan for how he should do it. And we're just kind of upset that he doesn't seem to be doing what we're expecting him to do. We want to be the boss. And he, on the other hand, is calling us to trust him. He is calling on us to rely on him, to have faith in him. Not in our own cleverness or strength or goodness, but in his great love, his great mercy, his presence with us. And that means we have to keep praying to accept his grace. We have to keep asking to have the humility to accept God's will for us. To be able to walk into that sea and know that he will guide us through it on dry land. To face whatever challenges we're presented with. Not with a demand on how God should fix it for us. But with a heart asking for him to reveal to us his will in that moment, in that crisis. If we allow God's grace to be in us, if we surrender to his will, he can do incredible things in us. He can do the seemingly impossible, overcome even the greatest evils of our lives, of this world. But it has to be in God's way. It has to be in God's time. And we know that that is going to be the way and the time that is best for us. The time that was prepared from the very beginning. The plan that is meant to save us and bring us happiness and peace. But it takes that trust. It takes that surrender. It takes an understanding that what God wants for us is better than what we have planned for ourselves. And that's incredibly difficult to do. That's why it always has to start 
with the prayer asking for God's grace to let us surrender to his love. Let's make sure that we keep praying that prayer each day and keep accepting his grace a little more deeply each day because our journey through the Red Sea of our lives is always one, one step at a time throughout our whole lives.